Should I sit up? They see. <laughs> oh, how I hate using other people's weapons. That's it, vehicles. Uh, vehicle nail heat. Yeah. Linda's <laughs> rifle safety wasn't completely off for the first shot. Then I touched one off before being on target with the second shot because her trigger is extremely light. Luckily, the raccoon dog didn't seem to care, and my third shot was true. I just shot a raccoon dog. It's a, it has a fantastic fur. It does. Um, but yeah, the fur now is probably too early in this uh, in the winter. Well, it looked fluffy. It but, did, uh, in the thermal. But, but we can uh, check it. So if it's, uh, I think you have blown it up too much. So. Yeah, to make it worthwhile. Yeah, you should it. use a smaller caliber <laughs> for cool dogs. <laughs> Yeah, we were hunting pigs, and so we had um, Linda's 7 millimeter Remington Magnum, which, for a, which for a great big old boar is a great round, but uh, for for a, what is that thing weigh, 8 kilos, maybe? Or less. Less? 6 kilos? Around, so, yeah. Yeah, maybe like 10 pounds, something, 12 pounds, a little bit too much gun. Raccoon dogs are not native to Latvia. They were brought to Russian-held parts of Europe as a valuable fur animal around 1948. The fur is no longer valuable, and the raccoon dog is now just a pest. It is a nest raider and limits game bird populations. Hunting for them is very passive. A 10-year-old count put Latvia's raccoon dog population at over 30,000. Oh, yeah. Vai drīkst tikai atplikām rokām viņas? viņas. Oh, nē, man cimdi nav, man cimdi mašīnā. Nu, tu viņi vai... Man cimdi Ah, nu, tu ļoti tā, bet... Tu esi, ka viņi zarāzi visādi, zarāzi ir visādi draņķīmas. Mēs viņi saucam pa ješku. Pagaidi, mēs apstīsim uz vispār viņam kašķis. Kas? Nē, kašķis. Skaibīzi. Izskatās? Smokes, yeah. Raccoon dogs are a member of the family Canidae, most closely related to foxes, yet they have the ability to climb trees. It's coincidental that my first success in Latvia comes in the form of a raccoon dog. All I talked about before going to Latvia was about this crazy animal that they have over there called a raccoon dog, and I hoped to get a shot at one. It's like a fox and a raccoon had a baby. Super. I'll be the only meat eater employee that has a raccoon dog hide hanging in their office. M.K. is short for Medmiaku Klups, which means hunting club. Drusti is the region we are hunting in. The first Saturday of October is when the driven season starts in Latvia, basically meaning that um, everybody can go and do driven hunts. They've been hunting already for two or three weeks, just doing spot and stalk and, and stand hunting. And uh, there's actually a, a bench over there where everybody that's killed uh, bulls stand hunting is showing off their uh, their antlers, they've already Euro mounted them. Just to bring you up to speed as to what's been going on, we met here like 30 minutes ago. Everybody's signing in, and people are signing in either as hunters or as beaters, they call them here, which is basically the, the pusher, or the driver. For most people, you're gonna have to become a beater. And be a beater for all the driven hunts, as many as you join in on, for three years before you can be a hunter. Okay, anyways, the meeting's starting. We'll go listen. Tā, šodien apsveic jūs ar pirmo dzinējo mediju, sezonas ārklāšanu. Jā, jau varu droši primārā. Tas nav individuāls medības. Jūs esat sezonu, pussezonu gājuši tagad individuāls medībās. Ir dzinēja medības. Ir, jums ir Jānis ļoti liela atbildība. Ieroči ļoti jaudīja pārcerā visiem. Tā kā skaidri redzams mērķis tikai un vienīgi. Trajektoriju. Spārliecināties, kur otrs mednieks, kur varbūt trešais mednieks, kur pretējās planga mednieks. Vadītājs parādīs, kurš šobrīd nostādīs uz mastu, kur atrodas blakus smednieku. Kā iet līnija, kur nāks dzinēji. The safety meeting covers all the rules and requirements of hunters and beaters during the drive. 
With this many people involved, safety and ownership of one's actions is taken extremely seriously. We all sign a waiver saying that we understood the protocol. It is often repeated that a shot can only be taken at a clearly visible and identifiable target. I'm happy to see that firearm safety is the same on both sides of the Atlantic. Jānis pirmo masties padzīt, jo viņš grib arī redzēt, kā notiek tā dzīšana vispār, jo pats un otro, mas, otro vai trešo mastā viņš nāk stāvēt arī uz līnijas, un ar kopā viņa stāvēs līnda arī. Būs kopā viņš medīs arī līndas ierodas, viņam papīri nokārtot, visi, kad drīkst medīt Latvijā un tā. Ja kādam iebildumu sakam, varbūt tās uzreiz, ja ne kādam kautrējais līnijā teikt, nākam pie manīm un es tur varam pateikt. Ja kāds nē, biežās mums ir dostarpības biežas. Ir atrisinājums. In case you haven't had your fill of superstitions on this episode, on our walk to where the drive was starting, a dog takes a dump, and the next thing I know, everyone is yelling at me to take my hat off. Turns out that when a dog relieves themselves, it is a sign that the hunt will be successful. But you must respect and honor this belief by taking your hat off. And if you don't, someone's likely to take your hat off yeah, and get thrown right. into the ditch. It's, uh, it's almost like a, it is a celebration, the first driven hunt of the year. We had 21 hunters exactly. Then they had 21 wooden tokens with numbers on them, one through 21. And they mixed them up in a hat. Everybody chose a number. Then we reorganized by those numbers. And then everybody was split up. One through seven was going to go here. Seven through whatever was going to go here. And then same thing with the, uh, with the beaters. They sort of broke them up and, and split them up. So anyways... We have like a leader here of our group. He's lining everybody out. We're gonna hang out, hang tight until we hear the whooping starting. And then we're all gonna move through and push this uh, section of woods. Now we're generally walking all in a straight line, hooting and hollering. I can't see the gal next to me or Linda to my left. I can hear her, but so can an animal. And an animal could be between the two of us. And if it stands still, we could walk by it and never, never bump it. Growing up, when we did driven hunts in Wisconsin and Michigan, it was an important part of the hunt to stop every now and then, not make noise. If there is an animal listening and waiting, that makes it nervous. It might make it bump, might make it move. And also, to definitely go through the thickest, densest stuff, which I have right ahead of me here. It looks like a nasty thicket. I'm gonna jump in. Hell, 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 hell! 
redzējis to bulgu, ko es teicu, tiešmā, kur uz to, kur viņus statījus uztaisīt. We just had a little volley of shots behind us. And that is very common in, when you're doing drives. The drivers are coming through, and especially a mature animal that's been through this. They know to hold tight. They let the yelling go by them. And they try to sneak out the backside. That's why it's so important that the um, hunters, the shooters that are left behind, that are early on, in like the zone where the drive is being executed. Bob, babe. If you're left behind, it just because you see the drivers go by, you shouldn't be like, ah, that's over for me. Because very likely that you might possibly get like the opportunity at like the oldest, most mature animal that has snuck through the beaters and is trying to sneak out the backside. And if you're vigilant, hopefully you get a shot like we just had here. So that's, that's we had a shot early. And then these, so hopefully we've got one or two critters down. Help! Help! Kaspars gets a call from one of the other club members to let him know he's been successful. As the hunt manager for the club, Kaspars is responsible for tagging the animals. In Latvia, the individual hunters do not carry tags. The club is allotted so many, and the club members can hunt until all of the tags are filled. Much of the meat is sold or shared with club members, so no one ever has too full of a freezer. Other hunters show up to help drag out the stag and load it into the trailer. I love how it's a team effort around here. The first two drives produce two red deer hinds, a cow moose, a calf moose, and a bull moose. I offer to gut the cow moose. Unbeknownst to me, this gains me a good bit of respect from the group. After two successful drives, we stopped for lunch. Some of the club members had prepared a giant cauldron of a soup they call salyanka. It's nothing fancy, almost more of a fridge emptier than anything. It consists of stewed venison, smoked sausage, potatoes, carrots, and get ready, pickles and ketchup in just the right amount. It's garnished with olives, lemon wedges, and sour cream, and served with fresh bread. Once everyone is eaten, the hunters are again assembled and asked who would like to do another drive. Kaspars explains that we've already killed quite a few animals and there is plenty of work to do. But the majority wants to hunt some more, so we're going to do one more drive. The group has also decided that I've been a good beater and to let me be a hunter on this final drive.
Ejdeņš uz zemē. Nevaru izšķot, jo tas ir Pētra šā viena lenķis. It would have been very easy to run 20 yards and peek over the hill that the stag ran behind to get a shot. I actually started to go and Linda reminded me that I was not allowed to move from my spot for safety reasons. It looked like a beauty of a stag, but I wasn't about to shoot at a running one, let alone one that someone hadn't given me the go ahead to shoot. Although I wanted a stag bad, one of my main goals was to make a good impression and be invited back. That was too small too. I, I couldn't see that far, I couldn't see the antlers. Where's it? That's a white tip on the top. Yeah. Yeah, but it's all about like, they really want you. If you're gonna shoot a big one, it better be a really big one. And that to me, from what I've seen this week, was still in that like medium size. So neither Linda and I were ready to like, Make the call to shoot that bull. Hey! Hey! Blood, fuck, what the fuck? No chikaret. No chikaret. Gun chikaret. I don't know what's happening. Ah, maybe not to all open. Yeah. But no time, I need to fast open it. Yeah. It's no chikaret. No, You've probably noticed the careful placement of pine boughs on the dead animals. The reasons vary slightly from club to club and country to country, but the sentiment is the same. Show respect to the animal. A bit of greenery in the mouth represents a last meal. Boughs placed on the animal are to cover the wound. In the fall, it is common to use a pine bough, but in the summer when they hunt the roe deer, an oak branch or wildflowers can be used as well. It's not that important what you use, but that you simply take the time to do it. Take time to show the animal how much you care about it. We then split up to handle the work that needs to be done. I join the cooking crew and the rest dive into butchering. Three of the animals will be butchered for the hunters to take home, the other two will be sold and the money invested back into the club. The Vedna or butcher shop, was recently built from cash that was brought in from selling game meat. So they cut up uh, two moose and two of the red deer. One moose is going to be sold. And now, to make sure that everybody equally gets their share, I'm going to pick a pile of meat, point at it, 
and then Gitz here is going to call out a name, and that person will come and get their allotment. It looks to me like it's sort of just a, a mix of everything in each pile. And, uh, you know, there's some shanks in some, no shanks in the other. And uh, someone's probably going to get more backstrap than the other, but um, it's cool. Another tradition at this hunting club is the almost mandatory telling of everyone's stories. First, the club's leader speak, then the pushers or beaters, then the hunters that had a close call, then the hunters that had a miss, and finally the hunters that took an animal. This is done so that everyone in the club is aware of everyone else's experiences that day. With 40 people participating, it would be hard to get everyone's story otherwise. Yeah. Pa, paldies, Kaspar. <coughs> nu, šis ir grūti. Es ceru, ka jūs saprotat, ka man ir divreiz ir grūtāk nekā jums. Runa dot, jo kamēr es runāju, man tāpat jādomā pa gramatiku. Viss <coughs> kārtībā. Jā, jūs... Pieņemsim Jā, paldies. Um, vispārīgi, tur ir divas lietas, ko es gribētu pateikt. Uh, šis man bija brauciens. Nu, ne tikai atnāks uz Latviju pirmo reizi, bet arī darba dēļ. Nu, nu, esam par darba dēļ vispirms. Bija fantastisks lai, uh, nu, darbs, un mums iznāks brīnišķīgas divas episodes, tieši tā kā bija lems un kā būs, un būs ļoti labas, un es esmu ļoti priecīgs par to. Um, bet vairāk, un piedodēt, ja es jūtos bišķiņ, <coughs> nu, emocionāls par to lietu, bet, nu, ir mana pirmā reize Latvijā, un dzirdot tik daudz latviešu balsas visur, ir bijis ļoti um, speciāli man. Bet es esmu daudziem jau teicis, ka Rīgā tur bija, nu, tā, ok, so, so, bet kad es atnācu tev uz laukiem, tiešām jūt pie sirds, un uh, tas ir viss tikai jūsu dēļ. So, paldies, un uh, mēs, nu, ne tieši no <coughs> Amerikas, bet mēs iepirkamies, ka mēs uh, lidojām te, bet mēs uh, šnābi no Amerikas atvedām, un tas ir, tas ir... <laughs> Tas ir viskīs, kā jūs visi to jau zināt, un mēs gribam nu, uzdāvināt kolektīvam, kur ir tiešām kā ģimene. Un, uh, es teikšu tagad, ja, ja jūs varat kāds atbraukt pie maniem, es mēģināšu, cik vien var jūs tāpat uzņemt, kā jūs esat mūsu uzņēmuši. So, paldies! Paldies! <laughs>